If you're looking for a used vehicle in the Chicagoland area, North Naperville Autos is your one-stop shop for quality pre-owned cars. Stop in and visit or browse their inventory online at www.NorthNaperville-Autos.com. What's up, guys? My name is Zach, and today I am driving a 2012 Ford F-150 FX4. Up front is a 5.0 liter V8, and down below is a six-speed automatic transmission. Now, I am super excited to be driving this year F-150 for a couple of reasons. First of all, I haven't quite done this year before. This body style lasted from 2009 till 2014, a somewhat short-lived generation of the F-150, the 12th generation, if you can believe that. And so I'm excited to share this generation with you today. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers like this 80 these cars were better sticker or a big friggin' bottle sticker if you're a big fan of that. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form. And you get a video of your car just like this one. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that five liter V8 under the hood. Well, it's a Coyote V8. And if you're a fan of Mustangs, you know exactly what that means. This is pretty much a Mustang engine, which is fantastic. It makes 360 horsepower and 380 foot pounds of torque. And it's a pretty stout, pretty good engine. I haven't heard too many issues with the five liter Coyote. However, fuel economy isn't amazing, but this is a 10 year old truck so you can't really hate on it too much. Like I said, paired to it, six speed automatic transmission. This was a new six speed for the 2011 model year. Modern F-150s have like 10 speeds now, but this is just a solid, a little rusty, but trusty six speed. Last but not least, this is four wheel drive. And the reason I put an emphasis on it is because this is the FX4, which we'll talk about in a second, but there was also the FX2. The FX2 is two wheel drive. The FX4 was four wheel drive. So that's how you can tell. But let's talk about the FX4 package. Well, this was a pretty mid-range package. This is before it starts to get too luxurious, like the Lariat and special editions like the Platinum. However, it's definitely a lot nicer than like an XL or XLT. So the FX4 gets specific off-road decals, fog lights, keypad entry, 18 inch alloy wheels, which have been removed for this vehicle, locking rear axle, skid plates, trailer tow package, Sirius satellite radio when you originally bought it, leather wrapped steering wheel, power driver seat, window rear defroster, as well as a power inverter and the sync system. But this one also has other options stacked on top of that, like heated and AC seats, which we'll talk about in a second. But this was very much a mid-range truck, not quite the luxury trucks where you get nice wood trim and things like that, but also not the base. So pretty interesting there. But speaking of which, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I get a bunch of physical gauges and a screen off to the left is my tachometer. Up in the center, I have my oil pressure, coolant temperature, fuel, and transmission temperature. Very nice for towing. And on the right, I have my speedometer, and then I get my very colorful screen in the center. I love that Ford has been doing this for over 10 years. I really do enjoy the screen and they do give you a lot of good information when it comes to things you might wanna know about your truck. Again, that transmission temperature is very, very nice to have and not all trucks include. So it gives you a little bit more peace of mind. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my selectors for that center gauge screen as well as cruise control. And on the right, I have my volume, skip track, media and phone options. The overall steering wheel looks and feels nice. It is what it is. It hasn't aged the most gracefully, but it's still here and it's working. Off to the left, I do have a climate control vent, my headlight switches and gauge dimmer switches. And then on the door at the very top, I do have the power mirror adjustments. And then I have my power locks and power windows. Moving into the center up top, I do want to talk about the rear view mirror for a second because this is actually where you'll find a backup camera. Part of the FX4 was that you got a rear backup camera back in 2012 very very nice then we do have a little infotainment screen just showing what radio station i'm listening to what my climate controls are set to and the outside temperature very very basic here then i do have more radio controls well first off i have 
the traction control and hazard switch up top. Then I have all my favorites, one through, well, really 10, but it's just zero. And then I have a bunch of options for that sync system, seek track, and other little necessities, followed by a tune knob as well as a volume knob, AM, FM, CD, Sirius, and AUX. Then I have my climate controls. What I love is that Ford has been using this little diagram of a guy for over 30 years in and out of their products. It's just a guy sitting there. It's fun to see that in so many Ford products over the decades. The big thing is that I do A, have passenger temperature. So I do have dual zone climate as well as I do have heated and air conditioned seats. So there is a difference between air conditioned and just ventilated seats. Ventilated seats just uses a fan, but AC actually pumps cold refrigerated air onto your back, and it is quite, quite pleasant. Then I do have the 12 volt outlet, as well as my aux USB and the little sync system badge. And off to the left of all that is where you'll find the four wheel drive settings, as well as rear locking differential, again, part of that FX4 package, and the trailer brake settings down below. Really, really nice. Moving on to the center console, I do have a little cubby. And then we have the shifter. The shifter, in my opinion, is quite, quite ugly. However, I can manually shift up and down on the side of it, and it does the job overall. It's just very plasticky, very 2000s Ford, where I feel like it's just going to chip and break over time, but that's okay. Off to the right, however, we do have cup holders, so we will do a big freaking bottle test here in the F-150 FX4. And I was nervous at first because the bottle did not fit. However, these are rubberized holders, so you can pull them out and then the big freaking bottle does in fact fit. The reason I was nervous is that almost all F-150s from the 90s forward do pass the big freaking bottle test. So I'm glad to say that the 2012 does as well. Then we do have a giant center console with a 12 volt outlet in there. Perfect for your rotisserie chicken needs. And then we gotta talk about the seats. The seats are power, memory, heated, and cooled, like I said. I mean, it really does do a lot. And I am very pleasantly enjoying them. I don't think they look anything special. However, in a pickup truck, you don't need all the looks in the world. Speaking of seats, however, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right. I hope you can see me all the way over here. But something interesting about this particular F-150 is that it's not the full cab, so you have these rear half suicide doors at the back. I do have a little step to get up into here. I can close this door, but I, I, I can't reach to close the front door. But anyway, sitting back here, actually not that bad because the front seats do have this sort of curvature to them. I'm actually sitting, my knees are touching them, but not terrible for a non full cab truck. This actually is pretty good. I don't get a center console or anything like that down here. I can raise these seats. I'll show now I can raise these seats for added storage space, which is very, very nice. The Honda Ridgeline of the same year acted the same way. And then I do have vents back here. Very, very nice and hard to find in trucks is actually rear vents. I have two more cup holders. Then I do have a 12 volt outlet and a traditional wall outlet, which is very, very nice to see. Let's hop around back. We'll take a quick look at the bed and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the F-150 FX4, and I do have a locking tailgate, but obviously keep hydrated with this thing, but not much else beyond that. I do have tie down hooks right here. This does have a spray and bed liner. There's hooks up there as well. However, not anything crazy. I do have this pole. So this actually comes up like that. Then there's a step that comes out of here so you could step up into it, you use this pole to help pull yourself up. And then you're into the back of the F-150 with ease. Now we gotta talk about the looks. And this isn't my favorite generation of F-150, but it's also not my least favorite generation of F-150. I think it's just very, very mild in terms of its looks. I guess I would consider this macaroni and cheese styling. That's a phrase I coined over the last couple of years of cars that I grew up around. They're sort of my comfort food. I don't think that they're outwardly pretty and they're kind of blobby, but it's what I grew up around. So that's why I like them. I grew up on mac and cheese. That's why I like it. So that's how I feel about this particular F-150. It's not outwardly pretty, but in 2012, I was in eighth grade and learning about cars. And so this was kind of the hot truck at the time, especially the Raptor variant. But now let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think finally driving a 2012 Ford F-150 FX4? Well, there's only one thing that I really don't like 
about this truck and that is the turn signals because when you turn them on they just go right back to center even while the turn signal is still on it's not very satisfying i don't like that but besides that just driving it it's actually really really nice i like that this is the v8 i think that's a big selling point to me because as we move further and further along, they just debuted the Ford Lightning, which is all electric. They also have the hybrid F-150s. That's where trucks are sort of going. This is one of the last just lazy, big old V8s you could get in a truck. And it's not even that big in terms of what you used to be able to get. I've driven F-Series pickup trucks with 7.5 liter V8s. So five liters is actually somewhat dialed back when it comes to what the F-Series has had in the past, but I do like that this is sort of the last era of just straight forward trucks. Now with the EcoBoosts, they're kind of complicated and the hybrids are even more complicated and I can't even imagine the electric truck is so much more complicated. Cool piece of technology, sure, and I would love to drive one. I can't wait to get my hands on one. They're exciting. But this is just kind of that simple basicness. This era up till 2014 is kind of that era where you can get them still for decently cheap. They're decently easy to work on, all things considered. Now, I know this isn't going to be as easy to work on as say an old OBS, but at least it's still somewhat in that wheelhouse. I am a big fan of that. And that's why I really like this truck. I think this is a great year. I think this is a great body style. And I think for a basic straightforward pickup truck, this is kind of all you need. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to North Naperville Autos for letting me take out their F-150 FX4. North Naperville Autos is fantastic. They offer nationwide shipping. They offer financing as well as they are Carfax certified they will find the right vehicles for you. Whether that be an F-150 or a Subaru or a Lexus, whatever you can think of, they'll help you get behind the wheel of one. It's what they do best and they do it pretty dang well. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.